All right. Good morning, gentlemen. Good to see everybody joining us here live. Thankful for all the guys catching the playback. Uh, man, we're just pumped that you guys continue to show up. And, uh, man, we're so thankful for you uh, just being a part of what God is doing at Men of Valor. And, uh, man, we just uh, got great things that we're expecting God to do over the next months and years. And I have a couple announcements on the back end, but uh, I'm ready to jump in this morning. Share with you from God's Word. Um, just going to look at just a couple of verses this morning. That's really uh, just been, man, just been on my heart for a couple of weeks now. As I read through Ephesians uh, a few weeks ago with our church reading plan, and these two verses have just, uh, man, God just keeps just pushing, pushing me back to them as I keep uh, studying and thinking and seeking. And this is just where I feel like God wants us this morning. So uh, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5, and then I'll pray here in just a second, but just uh, go ahead and be turning there. And as you're turning, I'm going to pray over us, and then we'll dive in and see what God has in store for us this morning. So um, as you're turning, let's pray together. Father, we love you. Just uh, thankful once again, Lord, to uh, be able to gather, Lord, even though it may be digitally. God, uh, to be able to see each other, to hear each other, but more than that, God, to be able to hear from your word this morning. Father, uh, we don't need a word from me. We don't need a word from any other individual that's live on this call. Father, we need a word from you. And Holy Spirit, now as we begin to open uh, your word, would you begin to do a work within us, Father, that we would want to go and allow you to do a work through us today, through this week, yeah, through our lives, God, that we would be light, that we would be difference makers, that we would be imitators of our Heavenly Father. God, now just take this time for the guys live on the call, for the guys watching the playback, whenever they're hearing this. God, we know that you can speak to us exactly where we're at in the middle of our situations, in the middle of our hurts, in the middle of our victories. God, that uh, you want to speak to us right where we're at and change us today. May our hearts be open. Holy Spirit, speak. Father, draw us to yourself. May we leave these next few minutes when we get off uh, this phone, this computer. May we leave challenged by your word. And may we have a heart to go be doers of it, not just hearers. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to dive in Ephesians chapter number five. Uh, if you, I know a lot of you guys have uh, done SoCon Challenge. If you've ever done SoCon Challenge Warrior Elite, uh, these are very familiar verses to you as you were challenged to memorize the first 21 verses of Ephesians chapter five, if you've ever went through that challenge. Uh, but these first two verses that we're going to look at, very familiar. But as I was studying through them a couple of weeks ago, uh, preparing to uh, preach through these verses uh, here at our local church. Man, there's some things that just uh, I'd never seen that I'd never knew uh, about a few things in these verses that just feel like I want to share with you this morning, hopefully challenge you from God's word as, uh, man, these two verses are very powerful. So, so let me read the verses one and two of Ephesians 5, and then uh, we'll just dig in for a few minutes and just see what God has for us this morning. So this is what it says. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. I want to read those again, just slowing down and really just listen to these words, because uh, what a challenge for us as men, especially um, to be challenged by the word of God and to just try and go to live out this scripture. So, so let's read it again. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. Guys, if I could challenge you with one thing this morning, it was this one thought, being an imitator, being an imitator. Right off 
uh, the bat in in these verses, right in the middle of this letter to the church of Ephesus, Paul is challenging the church to be imitators of God. Now, of course, you can go read the rest of this chapter because Paul brings out some very challenging verses, really challenging the church to not be partakers of sin, not to be partakers of the world, but to be different, to walk in light. And like I said, man, you can dig in, but there's so much in all these verses. I uh, mean, we can stay here all day and, and talk about it and preach about it and, and speak on it and, man, just really be challenged. But if we start off, man, with this one verse, with this one thought of being an imitator of God. I think it helps us live out the rest. If I'm trying to be an imitator of my heavenly father. Uh, back last year, my mother-in-law is a huge Elvis fan. Uh, she was raised during the Elvis days and just, I mean, she's always been a huge Elvis fan. Uh, our family took her up to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And man, there's a show up there where, where they have impersonators and they have, you know, all kinds. Of course, the Elvis is their main attraction, but then they have like George Jones and just all these old time singers that guys are coming out and doing impressions of that they're impersonating uh, those people. I, I got to say, when Elvis come out, they, they say they have a couple different ones, but the one that was there that day, um, I don't know him personally, don't know who he is, but man, I, it was a letdown for me because, man, I, I've watched some Elvis videos and it's like, man, but he just didn't have, you know, that Elvis uh, pizzazz. He, he didn't have the 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 shake, rattle, and roll that Elvis, Elvis had. You know I mean? He had the voice, he had the singing, but just the other things that he was acting out, he had the voice. If you'd have turned, if I closed my eyes, I'd have been like, oh man, that, that guy sounds like Elvis. But when I opened my eyes and I was watching him try to entertain in front of us on that little stage, it was just a little bitty venue. Um, it was just like, man, for me, it was a letdown because what I heard sounded like what it was supposed to be. But what I was viewing was not lining up with what I knew he was trying to impersonate. And what I saw was taking away from what I was hearing. And I thought it was really interesting when I'd done a little bit deeper study on this word imitate here in Ephesians chapter number five. And I want to share uh, what I found with you guys. The Greek word for imitators here in, in this one verse of scripture in the Greek, in the original language, is this word uh, mamates, mamates. It is where we get our English word mime. Our English word mime comes from this word imitators in the original language. Most of you know what a mime is. It's the, the guys or the ladies with the white face paint that, you know, that they're sitting there, they're acting behind the walls. You've probably seen it if you've been watching YouTube reels or things like that on Facebook. Uh, this guy named uh, Tom the Mime. He's a mime down at SeaWorld, and man, just a funny guy. Just He just walks around before the, the SeaWorld shows and just imitating people, just entertaining the crowd. But if you know anything about mimes, the number one thing that you know uh, the rule of a mime is they do not talk. They do not use words, that they are mimicking things, that they're going around making fun of things, but they do it all without using any words. And I thought it interesting that, that Paul uses this language of mimetes as he is trying to tell us. I, I really think that it's not about what we say, but it's about how we are imitating God through the way we live our lives. The thing that I've always found really interesting about mimes, if you've ever watched a mime or seen a mime, they use no words, but they relay a message in such a way is where everyone that is there watching knows exactly what they are saying. And man, what a powerful thing to think of as Paul uses this language with, with this kind of background, this kind of definition, that he's saying that people should see you living in such a way that you're imitating God. 
that they know exactly what your life is trying to tell them, that they know that because the way you act, because of the way you react, that you are so much imitating God, that you so much look like your heavenly father, that they know the message that you are trying to relate through your life. Now, I don't want to be taken out of context saying uh, that words aren't necessary because words are necessary. The Bible teaches us to go and make disciples, to go and share the gospel. Words are necessary. But just like what I was talking about with that Elvis impersonator early, if my actions and my life are not lining up with my words, then the actions that people are seeing are going to begin to make my words useless. Because if my words in my life are not lining up, men, then there's not much value in my words. If the life I'm living at home in front of my family does not line up with the words that I'm saying when I'm at church on Sunday, when I'm gathered around other believers, then let me tell you, I mean, this is a hard one that really hits home. But my words are beginning, my faith may be beginning to be useless to my children, useless to my bride, useless to my grandchildren. Because they hear me say one thing, but then they see me live another. God help us men to really see that the importance of us trying our best to live a godly life, to live a life that's going after Christ, to be imitators of God, the importance of living it out. To say it is great and to say it is one thing, to say it makes us feel good, to say it may even puff us up. It fills us full of pride, which we know that God hates. But I'm telling you, men, it's time that we do less talking and more walking. And when we begin to do the walk, God will open up the doors for us to be able to do the talk, for him to use our lives, then use our words, to use him transforming us on the inside, to work through us the works that he has placed there to begin to allow then our words to have impact for the kingdom, for our words to begin to penetrate to because our words then as we are imitating God are not our words, but it's the word of God working through us and beginning to be exactly what the word of God says it is. It's sharp. It's like a double-edged sword and it begins to pierce things first within us, but then within others. But guys, it is so important to how we act. It is so important to how we live to try to truly be these imitators of God to truly live a life that I want my life to preach. I want my life to preach and open up doors for them me to speak. For then when I have the opportunity, when God opens up the doors for me to have the opportunity to use the words that he has given me, that God forbid they be my words, but they would be his words coming through. So as I was thinking about this word and challenging us all to be imitators of of God. What's that look like? So the only way that we can truly be imitators of God, to be better imitators of God today than we were yesterday, is to simply this, men, to know him more. To know him more. I, I thought about once again going back to the Elvis impersonator. I was like, man, has he not watched Elvis? Has he not went back and watched videos to see how Elvis moved, to see how Elvis uh, walked? Because listen, the greatest of impersonators here on earth are those that have studied the person they are imitating. They've studied their walk. They've studied their talk. They, they've studied the way they, they move their facial features when they do stuff. And, and they study them so well. And then listen, not only study it, but they practice it, right? They practice and practice and practice. So when it's time to go on stage, that means they're going to give the best performance they can give. Shouldn't we even more so as men of God, as followers of Christ, to 
Imitate him to study him, to know him intently, to know him intimately so that we practice it in our private life. We practice it in our home so that when God allows us to put us on the stage in front of others, in front of this world, that we go out and we imitate him as best we can. It reminds me, I just read these scriptures this morning in my quiet time, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. This is what the apostle Paul said, writing to the church of Philippi. He said, my goal, my goal is to know him. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Paul said, my simple goal, my goal is not this, not that, but my goal, my personal goal is simply to know him and his power. Then it took me, man, to think about this, 1 Peter 2 21, where it tells us, for you were called to this. Peter tells us, you were called to this, sir, you were called to this. The day that the Holy Spirit indwells you, the day you repented of your sins, and man, you were born again, you were called to this. He says, because Christ also suffered for you, listen to what he said, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. I want to tell you guys that all we read about Christ in scriptures, it's him leaving an example for me and you how to walk. So what's the best way that we can learn how to imitate uh, God? To be imitators of God is to look at the life of Christ, God in flesh, that come and lived this life and walked it and lived it out. He left us an example, as Peter said in, in 1 Peter 2, 21. He left us an example so we should follow in his footsteps. So I want to give you six quick things really fast. I got to I gotta talk fast through these, but six things, and we see many more. Trust me, this is not all of them, but just six quick ones that, man, just God put on my heart this morning. And here it is, uh, six things, ways that we see, things we see Christ do in Scripture that today I think we can go and implement in our lives to try our best to live a life to be an imitator of God. Number one, simply this, walk in love. It actually says this right in our main text today of Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, where it says, therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children. And what? Walk in love. To walk in love. It, it don't mean that I just love in this moment or that moment that we should be walking in love. One thing we constantly see Jesus do as he's walking, as he's walking through this world when he was here in the flesh, that man, he constantly, constantly, hear that word, constantly walked in love. He had compassion when he would look upon the crowds, even though he was tired, even though he was hungry, even though he had physical wants and needs that he wanted to go eat, he wanted to go rest. I think of one of the very first times we see this is when he just hears the news of his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded, that, that his cousin that he loved so dearly that had, had laid out the path before him uh, to, to, man, prepare the way of the Lord, that he had just heard of this news, and, and Scripture says that he wanted to, that he told his disciples, Let, let's go and let's find a quiet place. He wanted to go and probably mourn and just pray and spend time with the Father, have some personal things. But the Bible tells us that when they get off the boat, they see this multitude of people. And it says this, that Jesus had compassion. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion. He had love for the people because he knew that they had a way greater need than he had of food, than he had of rest, that they needed only the, what God could provide for them that day. And it wasn't the little loaves and fishes that he multiplied, but he knew they needed a deeper relationship. They needed to know God. And I'll tell you, men, at first, if we're going to imitate God, it all must start with walking in love. So many scriptures that I could throw at you where it tells us to do everything in love, uh, to walk in love, uh, that God is love. So therefore, if we're going to imitate him, we must walk in love. Secondly, we see Jesus do this. We see him constantly putting others before himself. Guys, it is part of that denying the flesh, right? To, to love others, as he tells us, right? Love is the key to all this. But he tells us, that we are to love others as ourselves. 
And that's a selfish love, right? That's a love because, man, we love ourselves in this flesh in such a way that we always want to, you know, make sure we get first, make sure we're taken care of. And we do need to take care of our bodies and things like that. But I think we, we take that out of context and we begin to be selfish with it. That, that man, I want my needs to be met. And, man, we never see Jesus wanting his needs to be met before others. He always put others before himself. Uh, an easy challenge for today find ways to serve your bride, to serve your co-workers, to serve your children today when maybe you're wanting to go sit down in the easy chair and take it easy and, and your kids, here's one that's convicting to all of us, and maybe your kids want, want daddy to come play with them for just a few minutes to get in the floor and play Hot Wheels or play Barbie, whatever it is, but you're tired and you want to sit there, I want to challenge you today, here's a personal challenge. If that happens to you today or, or maybe your bride asks you to take out the trash or, or help her with the dishes and you're just tired instead of going, <sighs> and blowing up. Why don't you think about being an imitator of Christ and get up and serve in love? Don't do it because maybe you get some get some action later or, or you get a kudos later. No, do it because you're serving and you're serving others before yourself. Not easy and it's not popular. Trust me, it brought conviction on me when I said it myself. The Spirit brought conviction here. Because there's times where I don't live it out at home. It's easy, right? Sometimes it's easier sometimes to live it out in our workplace than it is to live it out at home. But I want to challenge you, sir. Let's put others before ourselves, and that includes our families. Thirdly, we see this constantly with Christ. He was constantly obedient to the Father. He was constantly seeking what the Father wanted to do. And I think my first instinct is to think in the Garden of Gethsemane, there he was knowing what was coming, knowing the cross was before him. And he says these words, Father, if there's any other way, if there's any other way for this to happen, for, 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 for there to be a true, complete sacrifice, let's do that way. I mean, he's saying, if there's any other way, please, God, if there's a plan B, let's go with plan B. But then he's this, but if not, not my will be done, but your will be done. So many times we see Jesus telling people when, when they may be questioning why he's doing this, he says, I'm not here to do anything but my Father's will. He knew he had a purpose. He knew he had a job to do just as you do, sir, just as I do. We are here for a purpose. If we still have breath, we still have purpose and there's something left for you to do there's something for you to be doing but are we seeking his will or are we seeking our will are we being obedient there's either one or two uh, there, there's a strong hard line here in the sand there's either obedience or disobedience i heard this said a long time ago man i've used it for so many years that hey partial obedience listen to me sir Partial obedience is disobedience. There's no such thing as partial obedience to the Lord. You're either obedient or disobedient. And if we are going to be imitators of God, we're going to be imitators of Christ, we must be obedient. When God says do, we don't throw questions. We say yes, Lord, and move forward. So we walk in love. We put others before ourselves. We be obedient. Fourthly, we see Christ do this in the scriptures. We see him intentional to seek the Father. We see so many times where it says that Jesus leaves early in the morning before the sun is risen and he goes away to pray. He knew his greatest need for him to live in this flesh was for him to get up and seek his Father first. He knew where his help come from he knew that he couldn't walk this out he couldn't do it just on this fleshly this flesh that we live in he needed that power from god that power that we see in second peter 1 3 where it says that it's his power it's his power it's where we get our english word dynamite uh, dynamis it, it's his power that gives us strength it gives us everything we need to live a righteous life. Uh, I, that's the Eric Stewart version there because I don't have that one in my notes. That, that's another verse that's just been in my head here lately. But just a reminder, sir, that, that I know we can be discouraged. We we can, man, to say that I can't do this anymore, that we have our faults, that we fall down, that we make mistakes because we live in this flesh. But I want to remind you that there's a power within you that if we're willing to light the fuse, to allow the Spirit to stir it up, there's a power within you that the Bible tells us that you have everything you need 
The enemy will lie to you and tell you you don't. He'll bring condemnation. But I want to tell you, you have everything you need to live a life, to be an imitator of God, because the Holy Spirit lives within you. And what we see Jesus do to walk this walk, to live the life that he lived, was that he sought the Father. He made intentional time to seek him, that just going, going down to the temple wasn't good enough. Just spending time with his disciples wasn't good enough. All those are things we need. We, we need to gather with others. We need to be with brothers. But more than all of that, he knew that he needed intimate, intentional time with his heavenly father. And if we're going to be imitators of Christ, if we're going to be true imitators, God, of as dearly loved children, sir, we got to have that intimate, intentional time with the father. Two more and we're done. And fifthly, we must seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Matthew chapter five tells us this, that we are to first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So many times we live off that end, right? We just say that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and we leave off that righteousness. The guys, we must be seeking it. And that's part of that, what we do when we are intentional with our time with the Father, that we should be going through our, our day seeking his kingdom, to truly be saying, God, how can I do some kingdom work in this moment? And the way we do that is by seeking righteousness, to seek to be right, to seek, uh, you're right, the, the, Jesus makes us right with God, but we should be seeking to live a righteous life. The Bible says that we are to be holy uh, as he is holy, that we are trying to be imitators of him, that we need to live a life that looks different. And if I'm seeking righteousness and I'm trying to live a holy life, I want to tell you, it's going to stand out real clear. You put bright light in dark places uh, it is seen i don't know how many times we've been riding down the road and you'll see a bright light from way far off maybe where they're doing some construction they've got bright lights but that bright light in the darkness will be seen and i want to tell you i'm just going to shoot it straight this morning if people's not seeing your light and you're helping the world, then it might be that your light is covered up, that your light is not as bright. And I want to tell you, the way that you start to lighten that bright up, the brighten that light up, is to truly get closer to him, to seek his kingdom, is to truly seek righteousness. Because I want to tell you, sir, you're either going to be seeking a couple things today. You're either going to be seeking your flesh, seeking you, or you're going to be seeking him. You're going to be seeking uh, to give in to the desires of the flesh. Or you're going to be seeking to give in to the desires of the spirit. Uh, this stuff's black and white, guys. It is not that hard. Right? Even scripture tells us that the works of the flesh are obvious. And you can go read those scriptures, uh, I believe, over in Galatians. Uh, the, 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 the works of the flesh are obvious if we'll just open our eyes and be real with ourselves. That, that the works that we do, that seeking after fleshly desires, it's obvious, but we're real good at making excuses. So seek first the kingdom of God. And then sixthly, it's just simply this, guys, to live it out. We see Jesus, he done all these things, but we see him live it out. We see Jesus, even though he's tired, even though there's moments he's hungry, that he lived it out. That he showed us that you can live this life in the flesh. You can seek God in the with, with the spirit within you. You can seek him. You can know him. He can help you. He's given you everything that you need. But it's up to us to live it out. The best way we can love, that we can be generous, that we can be kind, is to live a life, listen to me, men, is to live a life that shows this lost and dying world that Jesus makes a difference. I think one of the biggest things that has hurt the church over the past years, especially, man, in the world we live in today, is the church truly not living out righteousness. That the world sees that, well, they say they love Jesus. They wear the t-shirts that say they love Jesus. But I watched their life, and Jesus really must not make that big a difference because they really don't live a life that's much different from mine. Men, we need to live a life that shows the world that Jesus matters, that Jesus makes a difference. And the only way I truly believe that the Holy Spirit can really show others that because he wants to use us, that's what we're here for, that's what he's left us here for, is for other people to see that Jesus has made a true difference in our lives. We should be able to say, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 1, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. Guys, 
I'm fixing to pray over you, and I pray that as we end this call, as you finish watching this video, that you would take some things that the Holy Spirit has spoke to you today, and may we go be imitators of God. Let me pray for you. Father, Lord, you know every person that's here live on the call that's watching the playback. You know my heart. And God, as we go out to start another work week, will we truly have this heart to look at the life of Christ and go and try our best to be imitators, to walk in love, to put others before ourselves, to be light in a dark world. May we live lives that show that Jesus makes a difference. And then as you give us opportunity through our, our works to use our words, may our words be filled with grace, peace, and the gospel. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, we're right on time. I apologize for, for not having enough time to hear some comments. But, man, we'd love to take this back over to the band out, to our community, and, and share anything maybe that God spoke to you. We'd love to keep the conversation going there. Uh, but I want to challenge you, go be light. Let people see that Jesus makes a difference. Hey, don't forget, guys, a couple of really quick announcements. Man, Tuesdays, we're continuing to drop our content from our Men of Valor Conference 2024. We'll be doing that through the month of November. Uh, by the end of November, we'll have all that content out to you. And then uh, be watching because uh, in December, we'll be dropping our 2025 speaker lineup. We can't wait to share that with you guys. Uh, and then as well uh, in December. So I know a lot of you guys are doing the MOV 4-5 training. The first cycle we've had, we had like 120 guys going through it, man, and just hearing some great testimonies on what God is doing through that. Uh, so be praying. I want you to be praying and seeking because uh, I'm going ahead and share. We didn't got the specific dates, but sometime in December, uh, registration will open for the next cycle of the four or five, which will start sometime in 2025. So be praying. It's $45. You get stuff for that. So, hey, if $45 is a stretch, I'm giving you a couple months to save up 45 bucks. So a dollar a day between now and then, you should have the $45. Like I said, uh, man, all that money just goes and you'll get a resource kit with that. Uh, so be praying over that. Like I said, don't forget, check out our YouTube channel. These these teachings will be up. Don't forget, we got a West Coast man up Monday uh, coming up in a couple hours, 530 uh, Pacific time. So be a different teaching. Uh, somebody different to be bringing the word over there. So be sure to check that out. But guys, we love you so much. Thankful for you joining us each and every week. Hey, keep fighting, win today, and let's go light this thing up for the king. God bless. We'll see you soon.